Here's the next story that will, will let a person ask a lot of questions about what a Dajjal really is and what are his powers. There is a hadith by, narrated by this companion called Tamim al Dari. And this hadith, by the way, is uh, narrated by Imam Muslim. And Tamim al Dari, who had embraced Islam, he used to be a Christian, embraced Islam, an Arab. He got up and he said, uh, We were in a, a ship and a huge storm hit us and we were lost until our ship reached an island we entered the island a beast came to us on this island it had so much hair on it that we could not tell the front from its back which was its head which was its tail and we said woe to you what are you never seen a creature like you before and she spoke the beast said anal jassasa I am, you can say, Jassasa comes from the word spy or the passer of news. They said, Wamal Jassasa, what is this Al Jassasa, this spy or this passer of news? And then the beast said, Ayuhal Qawm, people, in Taliku ila hadha rajul fiddair. Come, come to this man who is waiting for you in a dair. A dair was known in those days as being like a place where people used to worship. Like where monks or people used to dedicate their life for worship, they used to sit in there and worship, no matter what religion they were. And he said, there is a man who is waiting for your news anxiously. They said, when the beast told us about this man, a man, they said, we ran away from the beast immediately thinking it was a jinn and ran to this man. We entered this hut that was set for worship. And suddenly we saw in front of us a person, a man, who was the biggest in build that we have yet to have seen. And he was so coarse in his body and in his features, strong and big. His arms were wrapped to his neck with chains. And his head and arms were also chained together to his knees, to his legs, like this. So you can barely you can just look up. And he's chained up really well, he couldn't move. We said, what are you? And he said, you are able to hurt me because I'm chained up. So it's my right to ask who are you first, so I can ensure my safety. They said, very well. We are people from the Arabs. We rode, we set sail in our ship and a storm hit us until we became lost and landed on this island. We came to this island and we found this beast that came to us that had so much hair on it. We asked it, who are you? And it said to us, I am the spire or the passer of news. And it led us to you. They said, we got afraid of this man and we, did, we didn't feel safe around him. However, the man said to us, Tell me about the palm trees of Baysan. Baysan is a city in Jordan. And he wanted to know whether there were palm trees planted in there a lot. We said, what do you exactly want to know about Baysan in Jordan? He said, I ask you, are there more palm trees and have they be filled with dates or not yet? They said, yes, it is full of palm trees and full of dates more than many other places in, in, in what we know. He said, soon its palm trees and dates will become scarce. We'll no longer give fruits. Today, really, in Jordan, dates are scarce now. It used to be in history, abundance. Now listen. He said, now explain to me about Buhayra Tabariya. Okay, the Tabariya Sea. <laughs> it's also close to Asham. They said, what do you want to know about it? He said, does it have water in it? He said, they said, yes, there's lots of water. He said, soon its water is going to go away. And truly today, the water has gone drier than before. Then he asked them, he said, tell me about Zagar Fountain. And Zagar Fountain is uh, somewhere near Jerusalem, Beit al-Maqdis. Probably about three days journey if you wanted to walk away from 
Jerusalem, Beit al Magdis, that's where that fountain is. So basically, in what we call Israel today. They said, What do you want to know about this fountain? He said, Well, is there a large fountain happening and a great river from it? And do people plant a lot of vegetation around it and it gives a lot of water yet? They said, Yes, it's all got a lot of water and its people plant a lot. They said, Okay, tell me about a prophet who is Ummi, who is illiterate, cannot read or write. What has he done? They said he has come out in Mecca and now he lives in Yathrib, in Medina. He asked them, have his people fought him? They said, yes. He said, what did he do? They said, he was driven out by his own people. But he went to another Arab, who are the, the, the Yathrib people and those who embrace Islam with him, and they uh, obeyed him. This man said to them, Really? Has that really happened? They said, yes. He said, behold, it is better for those people who obey him to keep on obeying him. He's actually supporting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Now I'm going to tell you about myself. Inni ana al-Masih. I am Christ. Isa Alayhi Salaam. Wa inni ushaku an yu'dhana li fil khuruj fa akhruj. He said, now very soon, based on the signs you've showed me, I'm going to be given permission to leave and I'm going to come out. Fa asiru fil ard, I will walk throughout the land. Fa la ada qariyatan illa habattuha fi arba'ina layla. He said, there, isn't, there wouldn't be a village or a city or a place on earth except that I would have reached it all in 40 days. The whole world in 40 days. Ghayra Makkah wa Tiba. All except two places, Mecca and Tiba, Medina. فَهُمَا مُحَرَّمَتَانِ عَلَيَّ كِلْتَاهُمَا He said, they are both forbidden for me to enter. Now when we say he enters, it means he conquers, takes over. He owns it. كُلَّمَا أَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَدْخُلَ وَاحَدِ He goes, every time I wanted to come into one of them, an angel will stand guard holding a, a sword. And he will prevent me from entering Mecca and Medina. He said, and now between the, every two mountains that you can find a pathway entering into, into Mecca and Medina, there are groups of angels standing guarding it right now to the last hour. There are always angels from any, if you're going to enter Mecca or Medina through any pathway through, through mountains, two mountains, there will always be angels within there guarding it, but we cannot see them. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started grabbing his, his, uh, his stick and sort of he put it close to his, to his hip وسلم, and then he began to bang to hit the ground with it like this but he was sort of tense وسلم, something very important he was really tense about it and he hit the floor and he said Ala hadhi tiba. behold everyone this is Tiba meaning he's pointing this is Medina he's in Medina he's saying this is Tiba the people there didn't know what Tiba is a lot of them and he said, this is Tiba that he's telling you about. It's Medina, which you are in right now. He said, didn't I tell you that this man will come out and not be able to enter this land? They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, because he had told them a lot about it before. He said, the hadith of Tamim and Dari, wallahi, amazed me as he told me about him. Because it's the same as what I used to tell you about Mecca and Medina. Behold, Ad Dajjal is somewhere in one of, near the oceans, in one of the, the on an island in one of the oceans of a sham. That's where Dajjal is right now. He's in one of the oceans and the islands of the oceans of a sham, which some scholars say Ad Dajjal is now living. He said, Oh Bahr al Yemen, or maybe the oceans of Yemen. But then the Prophet ﷺ corrected himself, said, La bal min qibal al mashriq ma hu. He said, No, no, no. Somewhere towards the east, the east of Medina, somewhere there, he said, in one of those oceans, on an island there somewhere. Min qibal al mashriq ma hu, towards the east, somewhere. Min qibal al mashriq ma hu. And he pointed to his hand that way, towards the east, because that way. So even the Prophet doesn't know exactly where he is, but in that direction. So he's close to the Middle East at the moment. So Allahu A'lam, Ad-Dajjal will first arise in Asham, in the Middle East area. 